All right, so let's talk about the overhead projector. This is one of the most basic tools you can use for liquid light shows or any light show in general, really. Um, you know, right now we're going to start off with just one just to kind of demonstrate the basics of it. Um, you know, but then eventually as you go on with your shows, you most likely want to use more of them. This is actually my very first projector. Um, you know, and it's not a very bright projector. It's like a 2000 lumen projector. Lumens are a measure of brightness of projectors. So 2000, 3000, it's kind of weak. Let me show you the inside of this thing. It's very, very simple. You have your lamp right here, goes down to a mirror, which then goes through something over here. It's called a Fresnel lens, um, which sort of spreads the light out and makes it kind of even across the whole field um, or the stage that you have here or the image plane. Really nice thing about the overhead projector is that uh, it's the interactive um, options for this are just you know really well done because you can literally touch the stage and essentially literally touch the screen. Uh, so yeah, you know, and you can basically put like any object on here and as long as it's translucent, meaning as long as it will pass light through it, it'll change the color of the light by passing through whatever you uh, project it onto. So this is called a moray, and this is when you take two different things, um, you take two patterns and you overlay them over each other, they'll start making secondary patterns, you know, as you move them around, right? But you can see one of the problems here, right? You can see my hands, you can see the, you can see the sides of it and everything like that. Um, and you also have a lot of white light, and so in general when you project, more likely than not, you don't really want to have too much white light. You know, black is, or dark, or the absence of light is definitely your friend when you do projections. Uh, very similar to like the idea, if you're anybody here to s say that it's not the notes that you play, it's what notes you don't play. So, one of the things, and one of the most common things to do to fix an overhead projector, and, and fix this problem of a big blinding white, um, you know, uh, you know, image being projected is to put a mask on the stage. And so you can take this and you cut it out and then, you know, you cut out all this light and now you have this really nice circle, which really helps for composition, um, you know, and it also helps focus on just the artwork itself. I definitely recommend um, taping this stuff down when you do it because you're going to have things on top of this that are moving. So if it's not taped down, you're going to have your mask itself moving during a show, which is kind of annoying. So tape that down. And now we can take that uh, Mori that we had before, which looked kind of crappy, and we can really tighten it up now. So now you can see we have just like a really nice, you know, just this like circle mandala like type thing. And it's, you know, the effect, it's, it's isolated. So, you know, it makes it look a lot better. Let's go ahead now and um, let's put some uh, fluids on this. So, you know, in the other uh, videos th th that I've done, I've used what's known as a squash plate, which is where you use two convex pieces of glass, um, usually clock glass, uh, you know, and you put oils in between them and you squeeze them. Now, that is definitely not the only way to do oils. Let's just get like a dish. In this case, we got a petri dish and we'll place this on, you know, the center here. And so we'll grab some water and we'll just fill it up. And now, you, you know, and if you really don't have anything at all, if you don't have any oil dye or you don't have any, um, anything at all, you can really even go like really basic. You want to see something, just grab food coloring and drop it in there. The problem is, and if you've tried this at home uh, with food coloring, you notice that the colors mix up uh, right away. The way that um, liquid uh, projection works and really well is when you have what's called immiscible liquids. So you have like oil and water. You hear oil and water don't mix. Um, and that's because they're essentially two different substances. And so, you know, in like a density um, tower, if you've ever seen one of those in like science class or anything, different types of liquids of different densities will float on top of each other. So oil floats on top of water. It's lighter actually than water. So again, oil floats on top of water. And again, this is very good stuff. This is really good high quality dye that I have that I sell. And so you can see when we drop a little bit of on there, it spreads right on top of it. And so now what we actually have is just a layer of oil dye, very thin layer, just spreading across the top. 
Um, so you can go ahead and you can just blow on it if you want and start getting some cool patterns. All right. And so let's just say we want to add some more variety to it. Let's get some uh, red in there. Yeah, this projector's a little out of focus. There we go. And so you can just blow on it. And that again is a very basic thing just to get like some simple swirly patterns or stuff like that, uh, you know, behind the, behind the band. Maybe you drop a little bit more in there. Let's see. Right, as you have more oil in there, you'll see that this won't spread anymore like the other one did because now there's already sort of a, a saturation at the top. Now you can sit there and, you know, anything like even like a little piece of like rubber tubing. For instance, this is kind of long, but sometimes I will sit there with like a piece of rubber tubing and just blow on it like this. You know. You can do that. And let's uh, let me go ahead and add some yellow to it as well. So if you notice, I haven't really put any uh, watercolor in there. When I do this technique, I generally don't like to add watercolor in there because I think that uh, sort of cloudies up the mixture. If you want to change the color, I would recommend maybe going ahead and just putting like a transparency on there or something. You can put it underneath, and you can also put it in front of the lens as well. Um, you know, but we'll, we'll get into that stuff later on. Now, one of the things here that, um, you know, you might notice is, let's just say you want to like change a scene or something like that, right? Uh, what are you going to do? Let's say you're like playing live and the band ends or something like that, or we're in between songs and we want to just, we want to switch over or something like that, right? So you can go ahead and shut it off You can turn it back on. Um, but Something that's really, really simple uh, to do is just take something like a bill, a little bit of tape, and, you know, basically when you put your hand in front of the projector, right, it, it goes away. So what I like to do when I don't have uh, dimmers or anything like that, and we'll get into that as well later on, is, you know, installing dimmers and stuff like that. Um, or you can also put an iris uh, down here, which will also control the light. Uh, really simple if you don't have access to those tools at the moment. Just putting like a bill over your um, your artwork will cut it out. You know, this is a little small, so you can see a little bit of bleed coming out over here. Um, you know, but overall, you can see it's a very simple way without having to like cut power to your projectors or anything like that. Is flip it on and off. It's generally better to keep the projector on because you also have the fan uh, running, and you know. The lamp gets hot and always needs to be cooled. You know, the lamp will either burn out or if there's a shut off feature in the projector, it'll get too hot and it'll shut off and you'll have to wait for it to cool off and then turn it back on again. What's really important is that using just one projector is sort of, uh, it's, it's minimal at best. You generally want to have more than one projector going and you want to uh, blend the light with the light on the screen. You know, don't worry so much as in terms of what's actually in the, the dishes, but when you start blending this, as we'll see with other projectors, with other light, that's when you're really getting the magic of a light show, because now you're working with light itself, and you're blending light on the screen, and there's a whole magical quality when light starts blending. It's really, it's really special. It's not something that you can get with paint or, you know, or digital stuff or anything like that. Even digital renditions of, let's say, like a, a digital projector emulating uh, additive light mixing, it still doesn't do it justice and even uh, here as you're watching this on the on, on the video screen there's a lot of stuff that just it doesn't get captured so well in the video so you really got to see this live to to get the full effect of it